we could be like the new Avengers or the new Justice League in podcast form. Is that because no one knows who we are? Shut up. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 43 of the Unusual Suspects Podcast. My name is Dan. Yay! (sighs) And joining with me is Betty. (laughs) Hello! And Andy. Boo! Thanks, that's made me feel better. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just, I'm I'm drinking coffee because I'm slight. I actually don't, I'm not feeling it, you know? Usually I feel it. When I'm on podcast days, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for a podcast. And I've had to drink like two fucking large coffee latte milky shit things that I bought, and it's not working at the moment. So, Kill some Tic Tacs. I think they you're just distracted happen. by your cat plowing away behind no, you. No, he, he's stopped now. Stop it. He's now stopped. He's going back to bed for the second time in about 10 minutes, and he's not carrying on what we all know if you're a long listener of this podcast. <laughs> Later on in the podcast, we're talking about another thing about sex. It's 40 Days and 40 Nights, one of Penny's Choice films out of the hat. Arf. Arf. Oof. Oof and boof will be the noises. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I picked it for a reason, but oof. Yeah. That's when I thought my name attached to it. I kind of regret watching it very, very early on and had to wait two weeks to kind of stick yeah. it in my brain and remember it again today when I read my notes and went, oh, yeah that happened but yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is shit <laughs> <laughs> uh well no we'll see when we get to it anyway but anyway penny are we back Bye. on are we back on your film list again for everyone is anticipating for something no, no 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 um no friend of the podcast chris and i had one of our little movie marathons and out of the three films we watched two of them were actually good holy fuck so i thought what was the one that wasn't I good bring yeah, what was that? Um, <laughs> it was called, I think it was called Dead Con, and it was about a convention of influencers. Yeah, it was a convention of, it followed an influencer, and she, they double booked her hotel room. So she was a massive dick to the the people on the desk. So they gave her the haunted room that nobody ever stays in. <laughs> right, the haunt, classic um, right. room 237, I imagine. The haunted. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know me, I'm not, as much as I love internet ghosts, ghost films are not my go-to, but it was just very dull. Um, Nothing happened for three quarters of the movie, and then there was some possession and some death at the end, but it was just long and boring. But that's not what I came to talk about. I came to talk about the other ones. We watched 2015's The Visit, which is an M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong movie. It's a Shyamalan, (laughs) Mom. The only problem that I have with Shyamalan movies, is that you you know there's going to be a twist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I haven't watched a lot of his movies, but you get to the beginning, you're like, right, okay, where's the twist? I think the best thing he could do is not put a twist in his next film, and people will be like, this is fucking, yeah. this is groundbreaking. Yeah. He's played us all yeah. for fools. Yeah. <laughs> to the point where Chris made a prediction, typed it into his phone, and like took a screenshot of it at the time and then showed it to me later when he'd got it right. Because he guessed it like ages before. But it is it stars some kids, some old people, and Catherine Han. Han? Han? Don't know Han. how we say it. Han. Han, I think. I think. She's Catherine great though. Han. She's I think so. She is great, as we know, from WandaVision. Basically, she doesn't get along with her parents. She hasn't seen them in a very long time. But the kids What's going? Well, they end up going to visit the grandparents, so she ships them off to see the grandparents, and they spend a couple of weeks with the grandparents, and it's a bit weird. And there's a twist, and there's not a whole lot I can say about it. Yeah. Can we even Without... guess the twists? Well, I guess it's I know spoil the it. twist, but <laughs> I can pretend I don't know the twist. <laughs> I think I might also know the know twist, it? but I haven't seen it. But also, I, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> It was good. I like seeing as how I knew there was going to be a twist. I thought the kids in it were really good. They're also filming like a documentary while they're there. The mm. the older I don't know how old they are. They're kind of 
I think the the boy is like 12 and she's she's a little bit older and they're kind of filming a documentary about where her mom grew up and stuff and I think she wants to get kind of forgiveness from the grandparents for the mom or something you know she's trying to do something for her mom I quite like how the kids work together they're a bit of a team rather than being like a brother and sister that hate each other and then they get put in this situation they seem to kind of get on and go through it together and stuff do you want to if I say right spoilers what do you think the twist is Dan I know the twist so you might as oh, well you know, ask Andy yeah you might as oh, well ask Andy. Andy haven't they escaped from an asylum the actual par- grandparents are dead and these two dudes have escaped from asylum yeah well Thank done you. <laughs> he has seen it so yeah <laughs> no I haven't seen I it mean, he looked up on, weirdly he looked up no. fucking Google <laughs> weirdly I watched the video the other day that explained it and I was like oh right oh. good oh. well I'll never watch this so they obviously try and make you think that it's aliens or something weird for a mm. while um, and I figured that maybe that was where it was going so it didn't occur to me that that he was loves it, his but... bloody aliens doesn't he I'm like... he does yeah, love yeah so aliens. that's why I was like oh and I'm not expecting him to be particularly subtle with things so I figured that was probably it but gone are the days of him doing films like The Sixth Sense that were actually good had a good twist yeah well I was gonna say that has anyone seen The Happening <laughs> with Mark Wahlberg no oh no is that the one with the plants Th- that's the one with the wind <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> the wind people the wind, walk yeah. under like lawnmowers and stuff yeah it's it's a great it's one of those it's funny it's trying to be serious but it's so funny it's so stupid and not his best mm. work let's put it that way but it's still fun to watch i would say that's kind yeah. of his films they're kind of like split is i wouldn't say amazing but it's kind of fun it because the gimmick oh, there's I always like, like a gimmick in his films that's kind of interesting to to watch and see how it goes down Split was my favorite of the three yeah what unbreakable split and glass yeah split was my favorite it's the only one i've seen but i like mcavoy so that's uh yeah i think that's a win for me that's why he was great in that because it was kind of a Shyamalan movie i was like oh this will just be fine um so i'm i'm surprised how much i actually enjoyed it <laughs> oh. <laughs> standard so low these days isn't it and then we watched 2018's Bloodfest, which is fucking great Bloodfest. Fans flock to a festival celebrating the most iconic horror movies only to discover that the charismatic showman, because I can't read my own handwriting, behind the event has a diabolical agenda. So there's a bunch of teenagers and they go to a kind of Universal Horror Nights festival kind of thing. There's all these different, there's like Clown Town there's like um, a place with a cemetery. There's all these different bits you can go through to kind of like, not like haunted houses, but kind of there's a, there's a cemetery. There's, they're always going on about clown town. There's like, um, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> one of the iconic horror movies is the arborist. So I think there's a whole bit about trees somewhere. There's a kind of jigsaw saw type area. It's got Ned from Spider-Man in it. Who I like quite a lot. Ned from Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, Lee Spider-Man, Spider-Man's best mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm not talking about Tobey Maguire. I it's never think Spider-Man. about Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Why did I go there first? I do. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, you, do, you do. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I don't want to say Cabin in the Woods vibe, but you know how they've got different monsters in Cabin in the Woods. They've got different mm. kind of monster areas. Um, and they go to this festival to hang out. And obviously it's a horror movie, so things go a bit wrong. There is a bunch of gore. Really enjoyed it. I th- what was so great about it? Besides from seeing blood and gore. <laughs> Which <laughs> we know, automatically funny. know is a fucking yeah. 10 out of 10 for you. But. Yeah. Practical effects, 10. It was just a fun film. I really liked all the characters in it, apart from um, one guy who, who you're not supposed to like called Lenjamin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Lenjamin. No. This is like Lenjamin. Genuine- Lenjamin. What do you mean, Lenjamin? One of one of the girls from school gets him in because she knows this director who's there, and his name is Lenjamin, and you want him to die within the first three minutes of him being on screen. Why? Because he's awful. Uh. He's just like a twat. He's like this, <laughs> and the fact that his name's Lenjamin. I mean that. Yeah, that says enough, really. <laughs> yeah, they go to this festival, and it turns you know it turns it turns a bit too real. 
and things start killing people and stuff. So it was kind of fun seeing the different sorts of areas with the kind of saw set up and clown town and the cemetery. It was just really fun. Would recommend it. It's not gonna it's not gonna change the world or the genre, but it was fun and I liked it. Well if it doesn't change the world, I'm not interested. <laughs> Carousel that changed. I'm still no, thinking about it. Really. That's not fucking you shown. All right, something people don't know from episode forty is she showed us like parts of the film oh, afterwards, mm. and <laughs> it's even more ridiculous. Yeah. Like I thought, it's it's so like obviously. I don't want to say like not being mean about, it, but it's so obviously amateurish the way they did it that it's just painful to watch so well now they're kickstartering caris hell too right how much have they made so far um and if uh, enough to get it started i oh, think fuck's sake. do you remember because i was like <laughs> i think it was if they reached this goal they could do caris hell too and then if they reached the next one it was they could do three but one of the things was like if you paid you could be in it and i was like i want to be in it but yeah i missed it all you should send him a little nudge on twitter and say how about this for a title just make the two L's Roman numerals. What for when they get to number eleven, or two? Two. Oh yeah. Two. Yeah. Apparently, I missed the Roman numerals part yeah. in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> that way, you've got an in, and you can be like, "Look, I've given you this free idea, and why don't I come in and be in the film?" I got a better idea, Pan. Contact them. Say, I reviewed your movie on a podcast. If you let me in the film, the first minute it comes out. I'll review the second film on the podcast. Or it'll get me an early preview and I'll talk about it on the podcast. And you make a little deal like that. And then we have Penny finally in a horror film and then hopefully she can stop talking about Oh my God, could you imagine if I got killed by a unicorn? So that's It'd what you amazing. need to do. We reviewed it. Yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you make it a yeah. bit more meta and you can yeah. have fucking Brian the unicorn or whatever he's called come and murder us. Stab Duke. you in the face. <laughs> Look, if we can get a fan petition together, just like a certain film we're going to talk about. I'm not allowed in America right now either because of the pandemic. Not release the penny cut. Come on, let's get Penny in there. Let's get Penny stabbed in the face by a unicorn. We all want to see it. Come on, let's start a petition together. Change.org. Someone set it up right now. I want to see Penny get stabbed in the face by a unicorn. Let's set it up. Come on. This is taking a turn, isn't it? I feel like you're missing out the part where this is in a film. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were going to film it anyway, but... Bloodfest is the greatest horror event of all time. It's nice tonight to let go of the reins. You don't get a little crazy. She's the one I will lay with tonight. Want to make a horror movie to end all horror movies? This is going to be the best night of my life. We also made everything real. The monsters, everything. <laughs> Oh my god, if you know the rules, you just might make it! Vampires, zombies, slashers, the clowns I found on Craigslist. Andy. <laughs> yes. It's time for it's time for justice. We're gonna did, unite did the it. seven. Are we gonna unite are we part of our own justice league? <laughs> there was a poster for the original uh theatrical cut that said unite the seven, but there's only five characters in it. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you probably already know by the time this comes out, Justice League Slider Cut came out. I guess before we kind of, we're going to obviously not spoil it because it is a new film technically and it's, it's a, it's a fucking, I guess half of our experience is how we experienced it because it was four hours long, obviously. And, and the other side is how much better we think it is from the original. Did you make it all the way through without peeing? I don't know. Did Andy, did you, uh, did you watch it in one go? Um, yeah, more or less. Well, I paused it to order food and I paused it to get the food from the door. I had a delicious Massaman curry, if anyone's asking. Exciting. Um, but we pretty much did it without <laughs> stopping. I did the same. Curry as well. No, really? I didn't have a curry. Let's not get off the food <laughs> subject for it. So, Justice League. What did you have with is... it? I don't, I, I don't remember. <laughs> milk and peppers. It was milk and peppers, wasn't it? I think it was actually stuffed peppers. You're close. So there you go. I think oh, it's actually yeah. stuffed pepper. Though. Stuffed with milk. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, Justice League Snyder Cut is a new film that came out on HBO Max. You probably already heard of it. Here is our review. It's in seven parts. They very cleverly kind of put seven in. Parts. Yeah, they kind of put it in like when you watch the film, 
it does this thing where it's like part one and then like a title like it something something so you could actually you could actually take breaks during those time it can maybe encourage you to do it like that but yes it is four hours long it has a lot of new footage a lot of new cgi a lot of re a lot of redone scenes, uh, including the infamous um, mustache CGI on Mr. <laughs> Henry Cavill. I'm going to say it straight off. I fucking like this a lot. I really, I like before we, if you listen to past podcasts and when we were talking about this, I was really confused to, to why we needed a four hour Snyder cut. And obviously... Mm -hmm. It's his film, I get it, and he wants to release his own vision, and that's a good thing. But I didn't know if it was going to be, because we've already seen that Josh Whedon mess of a fucking thing, but yeah. it is the same film in a way. I didn't know if this, like, a four-hour version of this, an extended version of kind of what we've already seen, was going to be interesting enough. But fuck me, it's really good. I, I don't know if you agree or not, Andy, but I, I really really enjoyed it i mean it's certainly better than the whedon version which was a million times better fucking yeah. dreadful can we just get rid of that film from all existence now since this one is out i like have a noob question yes mm -hmm. so so what happened where schneider wasn't allowed to do it and joss whedon did it okay so so what happened was um zach schneider filmed a, a large portion of it he had a whole plan and like a a, a trilogy that he was trying to build towards and then he had a family tragedy and he had to walk mm. away from it yeah his daughter passed away dc had um commitments and warner brothers had commitments to get it out so they brought joss whedon in i think they brought him in because they saw what he did with the avengers what they didn't yeah do is realize that he was an absolute asshole and piece of shit and just <laughs> not a very fucking likable guy so mm. they brought him in he um, then finished the film and you can tell in the original theatrical cut what is Zack Snyder's parts and what is Joss oh. Whedon's parts. And he rewrote a lot of things as well when yeah. it wasn't really needed in, in a way. Like I think everything was already scripted out and everything, but it, yeah. it seemed like he went in there and went, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're doing this. And it had yeah. a... Is he swinging his dick around? I, yeah, that's exactly what it did. I mean, the main beats are yeah. the same, but um, there's a lot of exposition and over-explanation of things that aren't really necessary. And like most Joss Sweden things, it's like dialogue heavy for the sake of being dialogue heavy. Like, I was intrigued to see how they're actually going to do it in terms of like, is it really just going to be exactly the same with a lot of boring kind of bits and it, it's not, not stuff yeah padding is probably the right word to describe it because it, it might just be it's four hours for the sake of being four hours or mm. there's an actual mm. benefit to it but it is like it really like it has the same a lot of the same scenes but like there's so much more fucking weight to everything like the character like yeah. every single character i would say gets a lot of screen time so there are the movies allowed to kind of breathe and like tell a bit of their story so when those moments come like when they come together like in certain moments of the film that were in the joss whedon one it feels like a much more bigger impact the problem with the joss whedon one is that it just went from action scene action scene action scene and it just felt like yeah there wasn't any weight to anything like when they all came together it was like oh great they're together but in this one it feels like I don't know, it feels proper. It feels like a proper, like, reunion or, like, coming together of all these kind of cool characters and stuff. Everything is sort of explained quite nicely and thematically instead of yes. just shoving a load of pricks in the same room and going, yeah, go fight this dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shove them. <laughs> You'll do something, but yeah. It looked a lot more darker as well. I made notes from the original one. Uh, there was, a, like, a red, uh, well, colourful colour palette that Josh Whedon had with his film, but... It almost not cartoony like I don't want to say cartoony like, but it had like a very bright kind of feel to it. It, it was yeah, it was like overexposed, wasn't it? Like they turned the yeah. contrast up to make all the blues brighter and all the reds sort of more vivid. And that's yeah, definitely. You know that's fine for Marvel, but they built this DC EU as being grittier and darker and 
more grounded and then to turn to crank all the colors up it just sort of washed out a bit yeah particularly when gotham itself is such a dark place and batman is a dark character to have that and then like some fucking real vivid colors it just didn't work and it's such a change from batman v superman because you go from like that is the the previous one in that trilogy and it goes from that to something that's a bit too just uh, even when he wrote in some of the jokes that they removed in this one thing fuck it was too Mm. like trying to be funny and there was batman was saying jokes when he shouldn't really be saying jokes like he's because he's trying to be funny batman and josh we want that's gone that's cut he's a lot more he feels a lot more serious um cyborg's character has an actual fucking arc which is great so there were rumors on set and i'm going to use the word allegedly here that ray fisher stood up to joss whedon and joss whedon retaliated by cutting him out of the film oh what a okay fucking bitch yeah well that would explain it then allegedly <laughs> Because they did have, uh, from what I remember... Allegedly whiny they, bitch. They mm. did have some of his... Because the main thing with Cyborg in this one is that he actually has probably one of the biggest, like, backstories. Like, you get to know him a lot more and, like, he's much more in, a much more interesting character. But they did have, I think... He's the, the heart of the film. Yeah, definitely. Zack Snyder came out and said he's the heart of this film. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but I think there was some scenes in the original in the Joss Whedon one but that would make sense that if he did cut it down then they got rid of a, a fuck ton of them and just yeah. he completely ignored it yeah all the characters I was like like every I think the only one that's like doesn't really need to have a big backstory and it makes sense is Batman obviously and probably maybe Wonder Woman I, I would say Aquaman Flash Cyborg and a lot of kind of more Superman time I would say is the ones they focus on to get a bit more of a story around them and stuff like that. But I, I do agree that they should, they were right to change the focus to cyborg and you need some backstory for flash as well, because this is the first film he's in. Yeah. Oh, that's Ezra Miller, isn't it? I love it. It is Ezra Miller. Miller. It yeah. is. Yeah. And he's, he's still really fun as he was in the, in the theatrical cut. Um, cause they need a bit of a comic, like a slightly relief comedic art, and light-hearted yeah. that's the word comic relief fuck me that's you you're the comic relief on this show <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm happy to take no, that role the, i don't mind that he's batman <laughs> i'm happy to take the batman role as well i'm fine with both <laughs> um but yeah i mean we've seen superman recently in man of steel we don't need to revisit that we've seen fucking batman's parents die every single time there's a batman film i'm fucking bored of seeing it so we don't yeah. need that as backstory Wonder Woman yep. got her own film. I appreciate that you get a bit of like the history of um, the Amazons and all that. Yeah, yeah, Themyscira. And there's like only a small amount of Aquaman backstory because mm. that's largely unneeded. I but thought you were going to say a small amount of Aquaman. Yeah, but to have Cyborg and uh, Flash be the two sort of main backstory elements that you get, that you build upon, I think that's the right thing to to have done. I had two things that kind of annoyed me about it Mm -hmm. and it's one of them is me being very harsh but at the same time uh, I guess if I wasn't to take it into the context of what happened to this film so one of the things is um, obviously a lot of it is very it's 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 uh, it's CGI heavy obviously because yeah it's Zack Snyder he did a lot of CGI heavy films in the past and stuff, but because of the way this was, where they had to do reshoots and stuff, it seems like that, especially towards the last hour, there's a lot of it, and yeah. it may take you out a little bit. I would say like the most enjoyable parts for me were the first two, first two to three hours, I think was the most enjoyable, but the last one was very heavy on CGI and stuff like that that kind of took me out a little bit so i read there was about 15 minutes of new footage used but 2000 15 15. 15 minutes yeah is that it yeah how long was the first one well he reckons there's a longer cut than this two hours so it was all footage that he shot before yep Um, but he reckons there's a longer cut to come as well and a black and white cut I mean, good God, what is this? Fucking Blade Runner. <laughs> um, but he reckons there's 15 minutes of new footage, but an additional 2,000 VFX shots. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah, so that, it was that very. Just, it's heavy CGI. Yeah, really. that goes to show you how much they're putting in, and I, it kind of makes sense because all of the footage they would have had before would have just been straight footage with no um, VFX over it. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And that final, like the third act, is very, <laughs> very CGI heavy because you know it has to be. And I think that's probably where a bulk of those VFX shots are. The other thing I kind of annoyed uh, with was, and this is a thing that I think was in the original one and it didn't take it out and I kind of wanted to take it out, was every time Wonder Woman appears on screen, <laughs> there's this fucking battle cry of like the Amazonians where she's like, Aah! like that. <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, stop every, <laughs> for a four hour film. And she comes like on the fucking screen, like yeah. a, a lot of the time. To keep hearing that battle cry, I was just, I was mocking it by the end of the film. Every time she came on. Yeah, so was I. I So I don't think that was in the original cut. I don't think that's in the theatrical cut. No. But ah. what's interesting is she has her own, like, bespoke music. You know, they yes. they have character themes. So she's got her own theme. Yeah. But that's still there every single time. And they never sort of meld it together into one cleanly it just sounds yeah i actually found the soundscapes really difficult and jarring because it was either that or it was nick cave and it just never seamlessly worked together songs that try to be cool like overly cool in the, it's hard to say whatever well and like orchestral it, but... versions of like leno cohen's hallelujah yeah isn't needed you don't need that in there you can you can take that out and just use a natural score leonard cohen's got other songs i don't know why filmmakers don't know this they're very good <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, Zack Snyder used that same song as well, didn't he, in Watchmen? So yeah. But overall, just to kind of close on my end, but like it's it's a honestly, if you hated the first one, the Joss Whedon one, give this a go. I I honestly didn't think I was going to like it. I I was saying before this came out to both of these guys, I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to like it. It's either going to be like a four hour mess or it, it's going to have to be really really great. I don't think it's really, really great. I think it's a it's a good film. Like it's honestly a really good, enjoyable watch. Uh, it didn't feel like four hours. It felt more or less like a three hour film. It, it felt like a Lord of the Rings <laughs> kind of length. You know, it, it, it felt like it felt long, but at the same time, it didn't feel like it was a four hour slog. And I'm happy that Zach got to release the film that he wanted to make. And as a DC fanboy, I think this is a pretty fucking good film. And take that for what you will. And he's going to shoot it down now. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot it down. I no. I think it's you have to look at it as a different sort of thing to Marvel. And I know most people like comic book films; they're supposed to be fun and whatever. DC's never been that fun. Like it's got some fun <laughs> characters, but Batman has never been that fun. There's always like a sadness to Superman that's not fun. You know, they're all tortured, tragic characters. Aquaman was fun. Yeah, but not this version of Aquaman. He's not fun. No, this is true. Handsome. Very fucking handsome, but not fun. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's right that they went down the darker route. And I think if they had tried to lighten it up, it would have made more of a mess of it. And I think that's part of the problem with the, the Whedon one is that it was trying to be something that it shouldn't have been. I think it was trying to be too much like the Avengers. It was trying to be witty and snarky in places and also colourful and have that but I mean the, it was still a bit crap it didn't sit well those aren't those characters at all they're all very yeah. serious characters the only one that isn't really is Flash there were some things that didn't quite work to me I know it was all like fan participation that got it off the ground I think there was a little bit too much fan service particularly that final scene yeah the, the, if there was any kind of part of it that i would say i didn't enjoy i enjoyed the least was the last hour i th think except for the 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 right at the very end the the thing at the right at the end is kind of cool but so the that's last the bit hour, that i've got a problem with you have a problem with that really yeah it's unnecessary I know we can't talk about it so we have to dance we won't talk about it. it we'll just use vague terms but i think because yeah, everyone yeah. wanted to see that from one of the other films because yes. part of that was in one of the other films, oh, right? And they were like, Batman oh, bang, Superman. we want to see more of that. So I think that's yes. exactly why I put it in. And that's why that character returned. Makes sense. As well. That fan fiction on the internet. So I'm, I, I think it's just him trying to get a rise out of it. 
as far as Snyder's confirmed, he's not doing a sequel to it either. So, I thought he wanted to do a trilogy. He's not had no plan. Well, he did the trilogy. It's down to Warner he's Brothers. Um, but if no. he comes back to it, yeah, he has no plans to do it. But I, I, I when I saw the end of this, mm-hmm. I immediately went, I want to see that. I because it like the just the scenario that is set up there is so weird and so different i just it may be terrible i just kind of want to see it happen Batman bang superman so without going too nerdy i mean that's going to follow like an injustice storyline yes that's why because i really um, liked the injustice storyline <laughs> we're dancing around it a bit too much but there's the ending will be talked about quite a bit by many people I've told everyone see. while you were talking it's fine they know what's going on I don't know what you're saying you're just mumbling she's talking about you. she wants to see you <laughs> banging Superman you want to see me banging Superman no I said it was Batman banging Superman that's all the fan all right. service that's what you must mean fine thanks okay thanks Pen, for your contribution <laughs> um, I will say there was an additional character Anytime. that I didn't know was going to turn up in it that yes. I did pop for yes and that was quite exciting because that's a character It's got surprises, that... I think. I think oh, well, it's yeah, got I some surprises. Right. That's the thing. Even right. though you've already probably seen the original one, I think this this has a couple of surprises that make people go, ooh, that's cool. So. Yeah. But I think there is a lot of fan service in it. And it was just just a little bit too much for me to fully be on board with it. We'll, we'll leave that there, but I, I I recommend it. I would give him the Josh Whedon one a 3 out of 10, and I give this one an 8 out of 10, Andy. I don't know if I would have given it an 8 out of 10, but I mean, it's definitely a lot better than the Snyder, than the um, Whedon cut, the theatrical cut. I think because it's more measured. Because yeah. it's what he wanted to do, and it's not someone else recycling footage and trying to make it their own film. There's no Josh Whedon footage in this at all. And if you think about that and then compare it to the theatrical cut, you can see how much Whedon has fucking used. Yeah, it's quite a because drastic change. <laughs> yeah, the the large bulk of it is the same, apart from the bits yeah. that are shitter. Pen's falling yes. asleep. We're boring. Literally <laughs> just the shit bits are cut hey. out, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So I, I wouldn't give it an eight. Um, I'd give it a seven. I mean, it's perfectly watchable. If you want a dark, gritty superhero Perfect. film with characters that you know then yeah sure but i mean i i still i would struggle to say it's better than you know endgame or some of the mcu films i know I mean, they're totally different ev- and it's like apples and oranges yeah, but it's different it's better than batman it's way better than batman v superman and it's way better than most dc films you have probably seen <laughs> let's put it that way it's it's in terms of the dc film franchise that's yeah. not good though i know it's not like good. these ones are shit I, but this one is slightly less shit well yeah. this is that's why not- i'm saying you have to you, take this and put uh, put it as your precious you know this is this is <laughs> Where we could be, DC fans, talking to you. This is where we could be and better. And hopefully the future's bright. A water breather. He was breathing air when I talked to him. Makes blood then. He said he'll fight with us? More or less. More, more or more or less? Probably more or less. He said no. He said no. Atlanteans can be tricky. My people went to war with them once. I'm not sure we can trust him. Man, if we're going to do this, we're going to need to be open to more things that we have. That's our review of The Justice League, the Snyder Cut. Uh, we also na, watched na, na, another na, na, film, na, na, which is completely different from uh, the, that one <laughs> this week. We watched Penny's Choice, a film out of the heart, which is 40 Days and 40 Nights, uh, starring uh, the Josh, Josh on, yeah, him and... Um, a couple of other people. <laughs> this made ninety five million the box office. Did Holy it really? Fuck. fuck yeah. Really. Seventeen million this... budget, ninety five million box office. How? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe why I chose just why I chose it is that I remembered yeah. watching it as a teen girl and really liking it. Uh, I love Josh Hartnett. I'm sad his hair isn't as nineties as it could have been. 
It's a um, bold but then re- It's dreadful hair, yeah. Yeah, it's not it's <laughs> not good. Um and then rewatching it as a grown woman and seeing all the things that we'll get into. But like I can see why it made a bunch of money because back in the day it was it was, I don't know, it was good and it was romantic and it was a teen movie. I don't know. But now I'm like, I don't know how that happened, even in what year was it? Nineteen ninety. 2002. Uh, 2002. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which kind of makes it worse. okay. Uh, so I remember yeah. before we started this podcast, Ben, yes. we were talking about doing a slightly different version of this podcast where we watch these mm-hmm. sorts of films and break them down as adults. And we both said we should watch this for that bit at the end. Well, so, this is. So, like, as I nearly put this in the hat as well and if i knew you hadn't have i would have put it in matt sullivan lives in san francisco with his roommate ryan uh and they're working at a dot-com company and this is during the times when the internet was becoming a thing it's very obvious especially when Mm. one of the things i have you know when we do leak watch which kind of got abandoned what was the other one we did what was the other watch we did derek watch was it derek watch is that new one yeah Yeah. there's no derek in this can we do laptop or PC watch? Because one of the things I love is seeing these old, bulky, fucking like MacBooks. Didn't I think like they it in hackers this. though, did he? Yeah, like a ah. Lenovo from '96. Oh man, they're <laughs> beauties. They're like fucking bricks. They're amazing. Yeah. To look at. You could pave your garden with those. <laughs> yeah, you they're could. about the same size as like a regular <laughs> paving slab. <laughs> I think it was in the, there's an opening scene where he's like, where they're showing like a montage, a classic montage of him and his girlfriend and they're together. And then there's a, a scene of him in the coffee shop and he's got his bulky fucking Mac uh, in a yeah. coffee shop. And he's about to delete all these photos of this girl. It says, are you sure you want to delete Nicole? Oh, yes, yes, you do. She's terrible. Delete her <laughs> from existence. Thank you. Poor Matt. So Matt is unfortunately going through some problems at the start. He's a film. sad boy. He's sad boy. He has an obsession. Don't know if uh, is an obsession. That's what Wikipedia said. He has an obsession with his ex girlfriend. It's not far off. No, is it? I think he's, he's just, just hurting. sad that they broke up. I think he's hurt. He's hurt. Yeah. yeah, he's more hurt than obsessed. I would say during yeah. that. It's only been six months. Like, I don't know how long they were together, but six months, if they were together for years. Mm, okay, that is quite a long time. The thing is, it's supposed to be like for every year you were together, you're supposed to be sad for like six months or something. Is or that the rule? I don't know. There's I, a, didn't know. I think it's like half I feel like time, isn't some... it? Yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes, that's all it should take. <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> Not Sorry, even long enough to terrible. watch fucking the Snyder Cut. <laughs> 45 minutes, okay. <laughs> Um, so Matt is heartbroken over his ex-girlfriend, Nicole, uh, which causes him sexual dysfunction with other women. Uh, one of the things we see is when he has sex with women, he sees cracks in the walls, <laughs> the ceiling. which is strange to like, I mean, I guess it, you it's need like to a, get it help. It's like a big black hole, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, but if you start and, seeing but, things after sex oh, or yeah. during sex, I think you need a you need some help, right? <laughs> like you yeah. Need, yeah. need like professional help if that's happening. And I understand being heartbroken and stuff, but like seeing things is like maybe on borderline strange. Yes, maybe. Oh, I always thought it was because it reminded him of a crack in the ceiling when he was with her, but it's not, is it? No, it's, it's just not, he's a no, black it's hole. It's just a crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like, it's like, it's, well, I want to say like the ground's going to swallow him up, but it's not because it's on the ceiling. Mm. So I don't really, but doesn't, doesn't it show like the ceiling cracking and like bits falling down and then he panics? Or did I make that bit up? Yeah, he's in missionary's right. position to right. be very uh, exact. Mm. And he's looking up at the ceiling and then while he's doing it, it's like, <laughs> and he starts seeing it, <laughs> which is yeah. just odd to me that it's that's odd. a thing. But either way. He's panics with that girl and he does the worst fake like as if he's never seen porn in his entire life he does yeah. the worst oh. fake <laughs> orgasm <laughs> it's not far <laughs> off that though that's the worst <laughs> part no oh ooh, oh uh, and she's uh, like, what the fuck is that but then i can't work out what's weirder is that she wants to check that's also weird sense. like she yeah she wants him to prove it maybe it's and sexual quite adamant satisfaction to know that he's not lying and he actually did what he's doing or it's being rude 
considered being rude by <laughs> pretending to fake orgasm? I don't know. I mean, then women are rude all the time, but that's a different conversation. So I don't think it's that. Not in my experience. Okay. I've never. I'm cutting that. Had a <laughs> fake you orgasm. No, we should cut hey. all of this. It's terrible. <laughs> All my orgasms Imagine being are like, real. No, show, show. <laughs> but then he goes into the bathroom and he's like, I need something that looks like semen. Like, imagine weird, kind of fake What does he use? Because does he fill up? Does he like... Because um, he throws the condom would, at the window, doesn't he? Yeah. And it sticks. I feel... You'd go with like... If you're in the bath... I feel like conditioner's the way to go, right? Conditioner yeah. shampoo, yeah. yeah. I would think, yeah. Unless you've got like coloured shampoo. But he's in the kitchen. Is he? I thought he went in the bathroom. No, he's in the kitchen. Salad cream, maybe? Gee, yeah. Not salad cream, oh, sour cream. No. Creme fraiche. <laughs> Dilute you know an alternative fresh. to come, please write in at P.O. Box. <laughs> no! The Unusual Suspects. Send in your alternatives to come. Thank you. Oh, Christ. That's how We're I in break the first this. five minutes. That's Old how I milk. break this conversation. Oh, oh, stop. No, it's too runny. Lumpy milk. <laughs> yeah, oh, lumpy. Yeah. Anyway, after his uh, disastrous attempt to fake an orgasm with his date, through the bagel man, who is this guy who comes to Matt's work who <laughs> delivers the bagels. He seems to uh, Yeah, we used to have a bagel guy where I worked. Did, Did you? I didn't know there was a thing called yeah, the bagel Yeah, when I worked guy. with Lewis, we had a bagel guy. He'd come bring us bagels. Fucking so middle class, isn't she? Yeah, definitely. So the bagel guy, um, he likes to simulate sex with bagels. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it's what I wrote down. He likes to simulate sex with bagels, and yeah. he mentions to Matt that he learns that oh Nicole, oh yeah, I've seen her around. Apparently, she got engaged, so he's realised it can't be her. Truly, it can't be Nicole. So he runs down the street and goes because to in 2002 you had to stalk people in person yes you that's true do it on the internet as much so he has to actually physically run <laughs> physically down there physically run to, see what's to going a workplace on. <laughs> he hears it from the bagel guy and has to go down there yeah matt goes down the streets in the girl's work uh to see that she is actually engaged uh which breaks his heart but then one of the problems of the film immediately happens and one of the issues i had with the film where a woman then opens the door she then kind of hits Matt as she opens the door and she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do to make it better? Anything? Yeah. And I'm... Yeah, just fucking apologize. That would help. And I'm sat there going, this never happens <laughs> in real life. That's because, no offense, it's because neither of you look like Josh Hartnett. Mm. Most people just try and hit him. me with a door and then... I'll just get off. a bowl cut then and apparently I'll be like a... What's... I, I, you need to be he's like eight foot tall as well he's very tall he's very cool. sorry okay sorry i can't be as good looking as i'm just saying it's very like yeah it's bad it, the whole film as we go on it's mainly about how many things can we do to make show that women really really want to have sex <laughs> it's the best <laughs> best way i can put it i mean it really is don't you agree does no one agree with me here? Because I honestly think that's the thing. I don't I think it's about how much women not, want to have sex. Yeah, but it's... <clears throat> it's how women want to have sex with him specifically. So now that Matt has learned that Nicole is engaged, he decides while having his confession time with his brother that I know what I'm going to do. And from a priest that tells him uh, convincing things, I guess. I know what I'm going to do. Lent's coming up. So I'm going to have 40 days <laughs> of no sex. That no kissing, no touching, no nothing, just nothing. No at all. scratch. He says no scratching, and I know no he means scratching. that in a sexual way, but it made me laugh. He's like, oh, got an itch, can't do anything. Especially no masturbation. Can't wait says. another thirty-eight days. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to do this for forty days because he believes that this might be able to cure him of his heartbreak over losing the coal by not um, jerking himself off. I don't know how legit this is, but I thought that Sundays weren't included in Lent and thus it should be 46 days huh. which means <laughs> he not... fucked up I didn't know that yeah. I mean he fucked I up don't. anyway I don't give up things for Lent I don't like to tell myself no so I've never <laughs> given anything up for Lent as, a Cath <laughs> as an ex-Catholic I had to and it was usually things that were you allowed to wank on Sundays? 
I'm not going to go into that detail because I was 14. So let's so not yes. go down that road. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, um, yes. Then. Let's not talk about that. Um, but All no, you did it, on Sundays. It was usually thing like I remember a 15 year old kid. Bear in mind the place I live was Ireland, and it's a bit different. I remember a 15 year old kid saying, "I'm going to give up smoking." <laughs> 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 which is well i hope it worked for him yeah maybe some people gave up vegetables some people gave up chocolate why you would know, you give vegetables? up vegetables i mean i would <laughs> it, although in fairness i already out. do i've given up vegetables yeah, for, length for the something... last 30 years yeah it's supposed to be something difficult <laughs> yeah some people got away with though by saying things oh yeah i'll give this up but it wasn't actually that yeah. much of a benefit you know or something that they needed yeah. in a way so so on day one of his celibacy, Matt purges his apartment of items uh, for temptation <laughs> and reminders of Nicole. He even decides he's going to start doing uh, model cars or something, paint model cars, so he can. He gets so himself. productive, doesn't he? He then starts going to a laundromat where he befriends a stranger named Erica, um, despite being unable to bring himself to speak to her because he's so sexually charged that he Was can't he? speak to someone. I don't know yeah. why he won't speak to her. That's just odd to me. I went to an all-girls school, and it was next door to a boys' school, and we were not supposed to speak to the boys next door ever. Like they they would have like dinner ladies because we shared the same like private road, and they were like, "You can't talk to the boys." I'm like, I'm not going to get pregnant from like talking to boys. It's that whole weird thing of, oh, it's too much. If I talk to you, I'm going to bang you. It's ridiculous. Like, I would expect that from someone who's never talked to a girl ever, but because this guy has just broken up with a girl, which I guess was a long-term relationship, it seems odd that on day one, he can't speak to women. That's just, I don't me, think it's that he can't. I think he's literally, like... Suppressing himself speaking, of the urge. Yeah, yeah because okay. he'll fuck her if he speaks to her. Apparently, you, you can't just talk to women, you have to fuck them. <laughs> this is what this film is saying. <laughs> But it is. Oh. This film is so it wrong. Is. It's so it's wrong. So, yeah. I did like one of the uh, some of the. I want to say nineties, but it's not. Is it some of the nineties porn that he threw out when he said he purged his apartment? It's classic. Very in classic. Diana uh, Jones was, was the best one. And, and the Temple of Poon. Yeah, that's, that's up there Poon. with Pulp Friction. Wow. <laughs> mm. So while all this is happening, uh, Matt and his co-workers uh, hear of his. Uh, his adventure he's about to go on. And they the start decide to start an office pool to bet on how long he can last before he bursts a nut. And this soon <laughs> spreads online. Now, I was watching this with my other half, and we both said the same thing at the same time. We're like, how are they gonna know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. are they gonna spy him twenty four seven or he's no, gonna tell got, them when he has sex? They've got someone on the inside. Ryan's on the inside, yeah. isn't he? The further on we get, the worse that he looks. So yeah. eventually, like further on, you'd like, what do you what do you mean? And that you look at him, you're like, oh yeah, I guess. And during the carpool scene, um, one of the female co-workers decides, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna break him <laughs> by None of the people in this are supportive of him no. at all. Like Everyone his friends are him. all wankers. <laughs> like everyone in this <laughs> Uh, pun not include, intended, sorry. But none of them, not only are they not supportive, and his ex they him. like actively go out of their way. And again, pun not intended, to fuck him over. It's terrible. Here's the thing though, yeah. Benno. They're dudes. That's kind of what happens. Mm. It's 2002 nice. dudes. Yeah. Got to get used to it. Uh, so she decides to flirt with him in the photocopy room. Yeah. Because she thinks she can kind of break him. She exposes a lot of things down below. And she tells him, I'm thinking of getting a tattoo of a pussy cat. Yeah, she says it just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a break in between, but it's not obviously that loud, but it's like, I'm thinking of getting a tattoo of a pussy cat. So, yeah, that happens. And she's like, do you like <laughs> pussy cats? <laughs> So everyone is obviously watching from afar. They're all like, oh, he's going to break. And then he's like, no, he holds it. And he's like, oh. I mean, what's he going to do? Take her in? Like, every these are his co-workers, right? He has to go to work every fucking day. Not only <laughs> are they trying to fuck him <laughs> to win money. It's such a horrible, toxic, like... 
Yeah. Poor guy. I feel He's so bad for him. He's got to work with those so people bad. for potentially yeah. years. And that story's never going to go no, away. It's, it's like the guy I went to school <laughs> with, he stuck his knob in a hoover. That never did, went away. <laughs> he then revisits the laundromat to see Erica, uh, who reveals she works as a cyber nanny who goes online. I don't know if this was a real job. I know the software no. for it now. I don't... Does it? Well, it's still a job now. It's a... Is it? I read a whole thing. Yeah, because people have to do it for Facebook and stuff. And it's actually like a really horrible job because it's not just... It's going to get a bit dark, sorry. <coughs> it's, it's not, not just, just porn, porn, but it's like it's like murders and yeah. abuse and things. Yeah. And like oh. people go and do this job and they literally have to... They get like PTSD and they need like trauma therapy and stuff because right. they see all that shit. But I don't know how, like you said, how big a thing that would have been in 2000. And but she's two. doing it just for the porn site because she porn. says, I've seen a lot of porn sites you wouldn't believe because I had to, f I work for like a family and they have kids and they have to, I have to filter out all these websites. No, she doesn't work for a family. She works for a company. Company, sorry. Well, so, she's but a, yeah, who, a use it, and, who use it to block yeah. out like websites and stuff like that. They share an emotional connection and Matt takes Erica on a date riding the city bus but awkwardly what avoids shit. kissing no, her. Thanks. What a crap yeah. date that was. <laughs> oh shit. But then 15 year old me thought that was quite nice and quite romantic, but that's because I'd probably never been on a bus? better bus date, date than going on a bus. Yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> normally used to the limo, aren't you? So, you know, being on a bus is a day out for you. So we're, we're going for that instead of old jokes and bus pass jokes today, are we? Because you can pick a, a side, you can pick middle class or you can pick old. We'll do both. <laughs> We'll do better. I'll edit them together. It's fine. It is bad that he's like works out that he can he can actually talk to her because he's like, oh, I really like her and I've got this connection because we're not worried about sex. It's like, yeah, you you can do that by talking yeah. to women. You don't. You don't have to, have to fuck have... every female you meet. You're allowed to have female mates. Well, he's working that out, so that's nice. Of him. <laughs> yeah, but he's not though, is he? That's the problem. So eventually, they both end up discovering that there's this betting pool going on. She obviously discovers it through. Um, I think the website the betting pool was on was sponsored by a porn site. Porn site. From what? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which her company okay. then manages or whatever. He finds out because they tell him that there's a betting syndicate and some guy from Bangladesh <laughs> is putting on like a grand. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, my God. They show him the website that they've made. So then he sees the banner that this is, like, sponsored by porn and then sponsored by <laughs> Cyber Nanny. But Swap. we also get <laughs> we also get a very 90s Maggie Gyllenhaal. Yeah. That is her, is Erica's friend. Like, with, I, don't, I can't really describe it, and obviously people can't see me, but the very 90s, lots of girls had their hair up, like buns, but very... Lots of hair sticking Wispy. out, very spiky. Uh, Matt tries to explain his intentions, but Erica remains upset. And Matt's boss decides to join in, join him in his little adventure going on because he has Matt's boss is, is creepy. He, he's more, yeah. Down the line, he's more. Uh, he's got yeah. issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one. I made a little note here, and this happens throughout the film. So this is only kind of like the start of this. I found her, Erica, I mean, I found her so dramatic. Fragile? Yeah. She's very intense. It, it's like she's she's okay with it, with him doing this Lent thing, but like later on in the film, she's like, why? Why can't you have sex? Like, it's very just, I, um, she, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, she seems to get upset about it very quickly and then over it yeah. very quickly. Originally, she's like, oh, why doesn't he want to have sex with me? And then he tells her and she's weird about it. Or she finds out and she's weird about it. But then she's like, eh, actually, it's fine. But then she's like, well, if you're going to do it, do it. And then call me when you're done because I want to have sex with you now. Like, quite she's unlikable, I'll undone. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I would have rather seen more of Ryan and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Uh, having fallen for Matt, Erica agrees to another date where they run into Nicole and her fiancé at a restaurant. Uh, this is where Matt accidentally lights himself on fire while looking at Nicole and her fiancé as well. And Question. Yes. Is it that easy to set yourself on fire by accident? Because I feel like films Movies. make it look really <laughs> like you know. Did you ever think that quicksand was going to be a bigger issue from like cartoons? Yeah, like, quicksand I did too. Was yeah. everywhere. <laughs> banana skins. It was banana skins. I worried about. You ever tried to slip on a banana skin? It just smushes into the carpet. Well, I don't think it's going to work on carpet, is it? Well, that's Doesn't why I tried on, it like, on when I was a kid. Floor? I was not. 
<laughs> I was in uh, quite a lot of trouble after that. <laughs> Scooping bits of mussed up banana out of the floor. I just don't think I've ever walked near anything on fire and then caught... Well, I know I haven't caught on fire, but is it really that easy? So the key know. point that you might have missed is that behind him there is a guy about to flambe something. Well, yeah. So it would have been but... like splashing alcohol that probably would have caught him. But I agree. I don't... I think you would notice before... You're fully on fire. Frustrated by Matt's vow and his feelings for Nicole, Erica leaves him. This is when I start putting that note of she's so dramatic about this. It's around this bit where I think two women start snogging each other in the back of the office and he's there and they're like, come join us because, hmm. yeah, this film. Uh, he turns to his brother for help, even at a family dinner. It results in their Oof. parents discussing their own sex life, including the dad discussing his sex life, his positions, and the checklist of ones of positions he's already done in the bedroom. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> like, even if he wasn't doing a vow of celibacy, that's too weird. And I actually found this the funniest part of the film for me. I don't know what it is about old people um, being awkwardly describing shit to their kids in front no. of them at dinner it's just it sets me off a bit actually now you said that the bit where he says to his wife because he's like oh i haven't tried this position so i can't take it off and i've done my back in wife, and he's like yeah and he's like have we done this one and she's like don't you how can you forget like malibu in 1984 or something <laughs> that made me laugh by day 35 of matt's vow uh the pool has reached eighteen thousand dollars and a colleague convinces him to give in i think that's a bit nine grand though for a wank so matt m marches into the bathroom to uh masturbate because he's about to give in but at the same time uh his roommate puts viagra in his drink he doesn't drink it and instead the boss who said he was going to join matt in his uh, celibacy drinks it instead so what happens next <laughs> is he gets very randy the boss and at one point he literally tries to look up a girl's skirt uh in the yeah. office yeah. like very These very clearly <laughs> well there was there was a bit just before this where um matt's in his room and ryan comes in and is like random like spot check yeah. and he, he gets a black, a black light, light. Can yeah. you imagine, like, walk, like one of your, you know, your boys, one of your mates, and walking in and using a black light to check his sheets? Like, what is that? And then, yeah, yeah and then the coworker literally trying to drug him is. They're is all a bunch awful. of fun people at that office block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he does. But he does make a good point. It's up to eighteen, so I'll give you. I'll give you half if you go and have a wank. Cause that's quite a lot of money for a wank, to be fair. Matt heads into the stall. When he heads into the stall to kind of relieve himself because he's he's about to give up, he hears his boss in the next stall doing pretty much the same thing, even though he just told him he was going to join him and he's given up already. So basically what it's saying is Viagra will get you so horny you'll try to look up girls' skirts and just go straight into the bathroom and wank yourself off for ages. Is well, what it's isn't like. there a bit later where the... Because obviously the boss doesn't know he's spiked and he was like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I've had three wanks at work today already. And some other guy's like, oh, one more and you'll have beat the company record. Yeah. And they all just fucking <laughs> bash you one out at work all the time. Is that what dot com companies did? In the 2000s, I imagine so, yeah. Probably in the 2000s. Probably. There was no phones. No one was on their phones really. So you just had the... Oh, so you've got nothing to office. read in the toilet. Yeah, no in office competitions bottles. and stuff were like, I guess the... <laughs> the things during the day it's the fact that everyone waits outside the toilet to like cheer him on oh. yeah yeah it's just it's fucking weird done knowing everyone's outside the entire office uh is waiting outside and matt escapes through the bathroom window and rushes to erica they embrace and they spend a night of intimacy together without actual intercourse now the fucking flower <laughs> scene right i was so <laughs> like this is bollocks i you can't get off to flowers. Had you seen what? this before? I Damn. forgot about this bit. <laughs> Please explain to me how you can get off to flowers. Go. Well, it's all about the sensuality of touch. Oh, I don't know why oh, I'm the one explaining it. this. Here. You fucking explain but, it to yeah. me. <laughs> I think it's all about like the, the lack of like physicality and just the gentle like touch. Edging. 
<laughs> it's edgy. It's pretty yeah. hot, that scene. It's weird thinking about it. It's like, that is pretty hot that it's she's so getting off out of place, though. touching her. It's so out of place in it's this film. It's supposed to be Sh- romantic, though, isn't it? Because but surely it breaks the rules. He turns up with the flower. Yeah, I did. Oh, no, because he doesn't touch her. No, you're right. He doesn't touch her. He still gets her off. It's still counting, isn't it? Yeah. I was fucking furious with this scene. Yeah, it probably is. No, but is it? But he doesn't get off. Yeah, but he's she engaging does. in sexual activity, which is what he said he wasn't in any sexual activity. It is for, it's it's, part it's of foreplay. It. Yeah. I think I think if you said to someone, I had a really hot uh, night with the missus, I blew flower petals <laughs> at her. No one's going to say that that was sexual activity. Oh, check out these flowers. Mm-hmm. I think... I think it counts. I think he's fucked up there. He's ruined himself at day 36. I think... Because it's no different from scratching. It's just a different sensation. You know? One is just firmer no. than the other. So if he's not allowed I to think... scratch, why is he allowed to fucking blow petals on people and caress them? I think you're right, but I think obviously... With a fucking lily. He's a prick. He's broken his rules and he fucking deserves... <laughs> I don't mean that. That's horrible. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> My God. If that stays in, the views do not represent the entire podcast. Just oh, that's coming out. Oh, well, I'll add something else. I'll just call him a prick. I think I, I agree with you, and I think he does. He does break the rules, but it's it's about him getting off at this point. Fair. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, but it's so, still it's still I know. foreplay, and it's inclusive, so it shouldn't yeah. count. He should not have been able to do it. And she I, says, "Oh, I shouldn't have done that," and he's like, "No," and she's like, "Well, fuck it. I've done it anyway." Also, she falls asleep fucking immediately. Like, she can barely keep uh, her eyes open. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. What I'm saying is, it's like she slips into a fucking coma. But he's like, so he's like, oh, do you want to talk? Let's talk about stickers. And she's like, goodbye. <laughs> it's like, fuck me. She's like totally out. Yeah, I used to date a guy that was like that. That's not weird. I don't think this relationship lasts very long. I think the two of them are quite polar opposites so. in a bit. I think once it, like, actually, you know, they have their happy ending scene, yay, yeah, great, they're all together. But I don't think the relationship actually lasts, if I'm taking bets on that. There you go. Is it like Naked Attraction, where they go to find love and then they see each other naked, they bang, and then they never see each other again? Yeah, it might be that case. I guess once well, he Dan's gets the off, expert he's... Naked Attraction, and he watches that a lot. So. Uh, I mean, I've consulted with the known expert with penny here so um just passing on the information anyway on day 38 <laughs> matt has a unwanted erection at work and is sent home. i'll tell you why it's because he's got the fucking flowers he's got the flowers with him he's rubbing them on he's his face he's smelling them he's smelling he's rubbing them, them on yeah. his face and he's getting the same fucking reaction she got he's gonna jizz everyone oh, he's like pavlov Dog it. Pavlov's dog it. He's like <laughs> it's so Pavlov. Every time he, he sees, sees flowers a, now. Yeah, he sees a lily. He's gonna jizz. <laughs> he can never go to I a like garden centre again. That was your again. note from Wikipedia, though, and I've just put boner. Lol. Ends up going home where Nicole arrives at his apartment, having broke Boo! up, having broke up with her cheating fiance, who's very funny in that moment. Actually, just to go back when she's introducing her fiance. And she's like, he works for a bank, I think. I can't remember the name of the bank. Morgan Stanley. And, and he works for like an internet company. It's strange how different times are when probably the internet company is more successful than his <laughs> job in nowadays, I would say. But she breaks up with her cheating fiance, uh, but Matt rejects her advances and sends her away, which only excites her more. She won't leave because he's trying to throw her out and it's, oh, it's so sexy. She's yeah. like, slam that door in my dirty face. <laughs> no, she says, my dirty, bad, bad, bad face. Yeah. Why, why? Could you not think of any other words? Everyone's like, I'm with terrible you with dirty, in this but... film. <laughs> mm. everyone, needs li- everyone needs to fucking calm down in this film. Everyone just needs to chill I for just, a bit. I don't know why everyone is so obsessed of, with where he does or doesn't put his dick. Like, I am not... I don't worry about where my friends are putting it or but everyone's I don't obsessed it. with sex in this film even his co-workers and yeah. erica i would say even though she's like seems like the sweet girl she's like oh, i can't stay with him he's not gonna bang me it's like what you you yeah. supporting him and now you're saying oh fuck off this is uh nicole she hears the bet and then she goes to matt's co-workers she's adding three thousand five hundred to the pot and discovering that matt has plans to celebrate with erica at midnight when his vow ends he starts picturing women naked on day 40 i forgot about that there's so yeah. many boobs 
A lot of boobs. There's literally, he's on a bus and there are women, just topless women everywhere on the bus. He like, must have a pretty good imagination because they're all very perky. He walks in on his brother kissing a nun. Uh, tormented by Matt exploits, John is taking a sabbatical from the priesthood. Uh, gets to the point where Matt thinks he saw the nun. Like it was an illusion as well. He's like, I just walked in yeah. and I saw you kissing a nun. And then he's like, yeah, that was real. <gasps> you were kissing a nun. Which is making it even more silly that he's hallucinating. He thinks he's hallucinating that much. It's just like, yeah. come on. He tells Ryan he's going to stick his knob in an electrical outlet. Because <laughs> it looks does like he? a face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Because it looks like a it. face. Oh, because it looks like a face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's getting silly at this point. I know they're trying to, because it's day 40, they're trying to build up, like, yeah, oh, he's, he can't take him, it. They're making him out like he's, like, a heroin addict. Like yeah. Like a junkie. Yeah. Going cold turkey. It's fucking ridiculous. It's too much at some point. You're like, okay, I get it. You're trying to, it's a comedy, and I get, and I, I know Reddit will get onto us, and they'll be like, oh, it's just a fucking comedy, why don't you laugh a bit? It's just the way it's done is so silly that you can't laugh. It's more or less like you're like, really? Kind of thing. Cut this out, but it's because Reddit's, Reddit's full of That's going to stay. Fighting to contain himself, Matt has Ryan handcuffed, uh, handcuff him to the bed. Um, he's also drunk at this point as well. He's been drinking. Um, so he's handcuffed and drunk in his bed so he can stay safe and not touch himself or go out and try to have sex with a plug or anything. <laughs> So he can just stay. <laughs> and once he gets to midnight, he's done the 40 days and 40 nights. And it's all fine. This is one of the weirdest parts for me. He's strapped to the bed. He's wearing shoes, but no trousers. Oh, <laughs> Why is he wearing that? shoes? That is weird. <laughs> Who wears shoes in bed, but not trousers? He would have had to take his fucking jeans off and put the shoes, shoes back on again. To get the shoes back on. Why? What's he going to do? <laughs> Fucking run a marathon with his knob out? Maybe the wind will get him off. Maybe he might. He's that horny. Is that what point. we resorted to? That we believe this character will get off to the wind? Well, that's what they're fucking implying. Maybe it's the not happening. He's going to fuck a power outlet. <laughs> <laughs> fuck a power outlet. I bet he wants to fill Mrs. Butterworth with warm syrup. He has a erotic dream uh, that he thinks is with, I guess... Erica in some parts of it he's like oh, it was a weird rocket a rocket dream and yeah, then he's like drunk and hallucinating her isn't he yeah and then he's kind of coming in and out of consciousness and then when he kind of wakes up he sees that uh, Nicole and by the way the door was left open yeah he asked Ryan he, to leave the door open so, so Erica that, could get in uh, Erica could you get in. would never ever ever do that if, no. Even if you're waiting for someone, like, like in you're an handcuffed block. to the bed, you're already handcuffed yeah. to the bed, right? And you've left the door open in an apartment. But he's block. not thinking clearly because he's got jizz They're on all the brain. stupid. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, they are, yeah. Every one of them. So he wakes from the dream to find that it's not Erica that was on top of him in his erotic dream. In fact, it was Nicole. And she raped him while he was asleep. Controversial. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. this is the scene we put this film in the hat for just this bit i guess um yeah. just before midnight so he's broken it broken the because rules she wants, she wants to win the money and yeah. she's mad at him so she rapes him rejecting her but she yeah yeah with no consequences she, at all she doesn't go to jail for this no, so nothing nothing it happens. doesn't <laughs> I, he's just like why would you do that there's no yeah i think when i watched it when I watched it when I was younger, I I don't want to say I didn't realise, but it didn't it it's not played off as rape, obviously, because it's no. a comedy. And it's like, a man. So it, I would yeah. say I, the main reason for it is because it's yeah. a woman and man. Yeah, uh, and it's a man. It's still rape though, isn't it? It's statutory rape. It's fucking horrendous. It is, but in, you gotta go back to that time, like two thousand and two. Oh yeah, it's, when it, rape was fine. Yeah. No, I'm no. not saying no, stop it. Fuck I'm rape. not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying no. it was more a case of, oh, it like in terms of the thinking, it was like, oh, it only happens to women. Interestingly, yeah. I asked my science teacher about this when I was in high school and she was like, I don't know what you mean. That doesn't happen. I was like, well, it could happen. The the argument is, is that a woman couldn't overpower a man to rape him. But in this case, he is drunk and handcuffed to a bed. So it's fairly easy to overpower him. So there you go. <laughs> it's all horrendous and rapey and... It's just the fact that how it doesn't 
It doesn't even get played off as like how awful it is. Like no. he's just like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And she's like, yeah, okay, see you later, bye. And that's it, like the end of it. It's meant to be a comedic moment, I think. Yeah. I think. Well, I think it's, it's supposed to be it, a download that he failed in his quest to last the he whole failed. time. Yeah, but, it, but it's the case not... of we're, we're like, oh, he, he broke, he was so close, but we're not going, she raped him. <laughs> it's more no, of a case no. of like, oh, he's so close to finishing Lent. That's all he can yeah. kind of. Yeah, that, I think that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> they need that other bit of drama at the end, which is pointless because this all happens fairly quickly at the end. So Nicole rapes him and leaves. And as she's leaving, Erica is coming up the stairs and sees her. Hmm. He was clearly handcuffed to the bed i don't know why she doesn't believe him that he didn't do it i don't know either because she's a fucking horrible person maybe (laughs) like it was quite obvious that he was in a very compromising position and had no control yeah and she still makes him apologize do you know what i mean yeah i can kind of get it from her side because he's handcuffed to the bed so she may think oh they're doing something kinky but he is not stupid yeah, enough to invite Nicole round f- five minutes for I midnight know, when she's coming around at it's midnight. It's a silly film. But it's a silly you, film. You say, you say he's handcuffed to the bed and it, it might have been a kinky thing, but he's ripped the headboard off of the bed and he's trying to get out. He has. And he can't door, because he's yeah. handcuffed to the bed. So it's not like he's just casually waiting for it to turn up and, oh, I might as well just get Nicole around beforehand anyway. Like, he's trying to yeah. get out and can't because he's cuffed up. So, like, if that's not fucking red flags for Erica, then she's a fucking idiot. And yeah. she's still like, oh, you're a dickhead. Oh, wah. Like, he has to apologise for being raped. Do you know what I mean? This this film is fucking <laughs> bullshit. Determined to win Erica back, Matt gives her a box of moments that they shared. Uh, that he finds her at the laundromat and they finally kiss as they consummate their relationship in Matt's bedroom for hours. Ryan and his co-workers days. wait days. Ryan and his co-workers wait outside and place new bets on how long he can last. They need on- to find something else to do, like bet on yeah. horses or This seems like a very bored something. group of friends. <laughs> Let's like- put that way. They're and so they work in an internet like- company. Watch porn. Sure. Why, why would you want to be Imagine waiting outside your mate's room while they bang. Why would you do that? Weird, I know. Uh, Until Mm. Matt kicks them all out, and then they start placing bets on when he's going to die. And that (laughs) is the film 40 Days and 40 Nights. Penny, what did you think of your film that you picked? Yeah, yeah, like I said, I watched it as a teenager. And even in places, thought it was quite sweet and romantic and whatever. But they're all terrible people. Erica is also ter- like you said, making him apologize and and like and her being mad at him for doing doing a vow in the first place. Like nobody supports him. It's almost as as if like if your mate wanted to give up smoking and you're walking up to him and blowing smoke in his face and putting <laughs> fags in his mouth when he's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> but this is just like they're putting boobs in his face and Viagra in his drink. Like it's horrendous. I'm not even sure how much of a comedy I thought of it was when it when I was younger either. It's not that funny. No, like there's no real laugh funny. out loud funny bits. I actually hadn't thought of a score. Oh, and right. now we're here, I don't know if I have one. Um <laughs> Zero out of ten. Come back to me for a score, please. Just give it an average seven. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you a seven. Well I have to go back to you. Okay, Andy. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? Hmm. Yeah, there's no likable characters. The plot is a bit crap. Uh, no one tries to help him. Uh, this, the soundtrack is weird, considering when it came out. Like, you'd expect a bit more pop punk or whatever. But at certain points, like the end when they first kiss, it's like the music from Beethoven, the film with a dog. And I'm like, what is, is that- this about? But they do play Everclear at one point, which I fucking love, and Semisonic. So it's very 90s-ish again. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, it's just a weird film. And like, it, it's not offensive until the last 20 minutes. It's, f- I mean, it is, actually. It, it, yeah. It's quite offensive <laughs> the whole way through. But it's like, it is. It's, you can watch it without like having to think about it too much. It's a bit like Euro Trip, but less fun. And I know that it's supposed to be like some shitty rom-com sort of thing, but it's neither funny nor that romantic. 
Mm-mm. And I really like Shannon Sossaman purely because she was the drummer in Warpaint, but also she's not a nice person. Neither's Josh Hartnett. Neither are any of them. The only one who has uh, like any sort of redeeming qualities is Ryan, who does try and help him eventually, and um, Maggie Gyllenhaal. And that's it. They're the only two but people. But even then, see. when Erica's like, when after Nicole has raped him and Erica is sad, they're at work. Yeah, Maggie's like, oh, just fucking ring him or don't, You're, or go home. You're pissing me off. Like I'm fed up with you. You know, when that happens with your mates and they're fucking whinging about something that they could quite easily deal with and not be a prick about if they just fucking communicated, it would be fine. Like. People are shouted at people because they're dicks. It's a questionable, but absolutely fine, inverted commas, four from me. I get why they did it, where it's like over-sexualized, especially women characters in this, because they're trying to break him and all that. I get it. It's silly. It's fun, because they're trying to do it that way to break him, and it's kind of put him in awkward situations, and I get it. It's just not funny. Like, even maybe if I, I mean, even if I think I saw this, well, I did back in 2002. I don't, I, I don't remember it fondly. That's when I watched it again. I was like, oh, yeah. But it wasn't a film that I definitely like laughed out loud, remembered it for years and years. It's watch it while you're drunk. You might find it funny. There you go. Just like Matt did. <laughs> but without Ooh. being tied to the bed. <laughs> or the other stuff. Or the other stuff. <laughs> don't do that. Mm. Maybe just don't watch it to be safe. Just don't watch it to be safe. Don't watch it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Four, feel, four out of ten for me as well. I feel like it's trying to jump in on like four. that whole early 2000s American it Pie feel- road trip sort of stuff, but they just totally yeah. missed the mark. It feels like, like a yeah. 90s film, but it's not. I mean, it, it feels like they're trying to do... It feels like the moment when this film came out, those 90s films were redundant. And this was the final yeah. one that came. Yeah, <laughs> where it's just, almost eh. like it's trying to be like a Blink One Eight Two song. You know, they're very stupid. I want to <laughs> fuck a dog in the ass type songs yeah. or something like the very or like the on stage banter. And they're like, we'll take all these inverted commas funny sex things and put them all together. But also, we are we are too late. <laughs> like American <laughs> Pie did it, and yeah, it's been done. Up. It's been done before, and. I, I get that they're trying to make like, oh, it's an awkward situational kind of comedy. And I know that we've been accused of being overly sensitive about things like on the internet. Some people have said we're twats and we're, you know, we should just take things with a pinch of salt because appreciate them when they came out. But, you know, that is not an excuse for this shit. But we're not watching it in 2002, we're watching it in 2021. We're, yeah. we're seeing yeah. how that film is today that's the reason why we watch these old films because we yeah. can see if do they live up or have they aged well or something and yeah. it definitely hasn't for this have we got a score pen i'm gonna give it a three it's gonna get a point for josh Hartner, even though his hair's not great it's gonna get one point because it includes everclear in the soundtrack and <laughs> i can't remember what the third point was for but three. i feel i feel like i've been too generous if i've given a four yeah, I was thinking really it too. Knocked it down. Jeez. Yeah, I'm not. The thing is, it's well, now, like... we, like, now we've talked about it. It's not funny. It's not anything. Yeah. <laughs> why did you pick it then? <laughs> to for talk this, about for this why scene. we can have a rape scene in Just a comedy one scene. film. <laughs> for genuinely for that scene, yeah. I think the problem is that like it's background noise, but it's not the sort of background noise that would suck you in. But you know what you're saying about it being offensive? Like, if you watch it now, some women could be like, oh, like, they've got their tits out and all they want to do is try and bang him. Is it slightly offensive to dudes that you that that's all you think about? Or like the way that dudes are portrayed in this? I feel like I'm slightly offended on your behalf. Is that a thing? <laughs> no, because I, I think we know <laughs> people know. who are like that. It's not every dude. Yeah. This isn't like a not all men thing. But legitimately, no. it's not like... I don't think every dude thinks like that. I don't. Dan doesn't. Sherlock does. I think we do know people who do think like that, including Dan's cat. But I mean, like they're just perpetuating a stereotype from 2002 and that's what they do. Uh, So film out that for in two weeks time. We take a film, pull out of a hat that has a predetermined amount of films we put in there at the start of the year. 
and then we watch that film in two weeks if you are new here that's how this rolls uh so <laughs> i want to say usually they're better than this but who knows who oh, knows God, we'll what find we'll out in a <laughs> we never know i mean we had fucking what power rangers a couple of weeks back so you never know <laughs> To be fair, I miss Ivan Ooze. He's he's a great guy. He he was. You could put him in Forty Days and Forty Nights. Yeah, put him in Forty Days. Forty Nights. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to get he's his ooze everywhere. Character. Um, I'm cutting with a shout, or I might use it for the intro. I haven't decided yet. The film. <laughs> stop saying I'm going to cut it out because all you'll be cutting out is you guys saying cut this out. <laughs> the film out of the hat in two weeks' time. Now. Here's a funny story, guys. I oh, had no. this in my list, but then when one of you sent it in, I immediately went, well, I'm not going to take the blame on this one, so oh, I'm going to no. remove the film. <laughs> this is the only film out of all the films we put in oh. that there was a match. I didn't tell you guys. I kept it a secret until right now. This was the only we- film we had a match on, a.k.a. I, I picked it and someone else here also which is quite it. impressive because we must have put in like a hundred plus films so far it was a hundred films or so yeah oh. yeah so there were, i took my <laughs> pick out of this film so i wouldn't get the blame for it and I, of course i left oh, no. andy's pick in mm. there I'm so excited. the film in two weeks picked by andy only andy himself and it's very fitting for today's episode is the 1966 classic batman <laughs> Yeah, hell, guys. Yeah, Batman and Robin. Which, which, which? Who's playing Batman? Adam in this West. One? Adam West. This Adam, Adam West. West. Oh, the, really? This, the classic. Hey, less of that, Bennett. He's a fucking Bennett. hero. Adam. This is Adam. A, we. This is a great film to kind of discuss. I think, like, just because it's 1966 Batman, and the movie itself has some very funny moments yeah. that i still honestly laugh at because i hope I it's full of puns oh my god I, i'm excited for puns i no. haven't watched this for a very long time fun story like holy batches batman <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's one of them i don't think robin says that but like the oh. if the opening scene doesn't get you i remember the opening scene vera if that doesn't get you then you might not like it but the opening scene is something batman and robin discover a secret invention that the evil villains plan to use to dehydrate the entire population in exchange for ransom. The duo must find a way to stop them and save the world. This, of course, Jinkies! Oh no, that's Scooby-Doo. Damn it. I, I think this film is a PG. It's a... Yeah, it's a PG. I once got it, ID'd for this in a Tesco's <laughs> in Oxford. <laughs> What, when you were six? Haven't you had a beard since you were like 10? I was at least 22. I know we're probably going to give this, we maybe give it like a low ranking, but at the same time, I think it's like quite a fun film to watch. But either way. Imagine if I like it more than Drive. I think you will. I think it's definitely going to be up there because it's just got some silly moments in it and it's just funny. That's all it is. But anyway, Batman 1966. Uh... It's fun. I think no, it's on no, Netflix no, no, at the moment, actually. No, go watch no, it. There you go. Penny, what's the social? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Unusual Suspects Pod and on Twitter at Unusual Podspect. I'm at Penny underscore Photo Pit. At Dan Talks on what? At Choices 21. We'll be back next week for more fun and joy and hugs and kisses and, and <laughs> love and care and all the joys Consensual in the world. hugs and kisses, please. Consensual hugs yeah. and kisses, of course. Uh, like, you know, would be safe out there. Uh, yeah, use protection if you're using flowers. Don't open yeah. your door if you're tied to the bed. Yeah. And also don't, don't wear door, shoes in bed, because apparently <laughs> that will fuck Andy up the most out of this whole entire <laughs> it's film. It's weird. It's really weird. <laughs> don't anyway. wank at work while everyone's outside listening. Don't wank at work. Don't drug your co-workers with Viagra. That no. could uh, end up in bad situations too. So make sure you learned a lot from this episode. I know I have. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Goodbye all. Hashtag Bye. release the Bennett cut. <laughs>